Kids Time Live, Kids Town Live. I'm Becky Santini. I am the Children's Ministry Director at Covenant Community Church in Vacaville, California. Hope everyone's doing well today. Um, we are starting a new series on Matthew. Well, it's pretty dark. Let me see if I can brighten myself up. Let's see. I have a light here trying to shine on my face. I'm going to see what happens here. Ah, I think it worked a little bit. A little bit. Um, hmm. Okay, so if I have a shadow on my face today, I apologize. This is what happens when you work from home and you don't have all the fancy stuff. I have a tripod for my phone, and then I have to watch it on my computer. Because if I turn my phone around so I can see it, Everything ends up backwards for you guys. So, this is what happens. But um, we are starting a series on Matthew. And we're starting this week um, with a lesson called Saved in the Nick of Time. And it comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 23. So, if you want to go back later, you can read those verses in your Bible. But today, I want to tell you about two special babies who grew up to be rescuers. First, though, I have a question. Can you think of something in the world that would be bad? Think about that for a minute. Um, I'm sure there's lots of things that you could think of. Um, see. There we go. Um, what are some evil or some sad things that we see around us? What kind of things do we see? I'm hoping you can hear me better today. Last week I think my volume was a little weird. So I will try and speak louder. Um, so just you guys, it would be great if you give me feedback as we go along if you're live with me. Um, if not, send me a message later on to let me know how I can make this a little bit better for you. So what kind of things are evil or sad? Let's see people lose their lives. Right now, we have a pandemic, and we can't go to school. We can't see our friends. Going out and doing a lot of things is... Um, not really allowed right now, that's sad. Um, so th these kind of things happen, and, and unfortunately we live in a world that's impacted by sin. We all do bad things, and there's evil around us, and that's always been the case. However, we also have hope, because we know that God is in control, and he will always be around us. Now, I brought some items here. I'm trying to keep them out of the shop so you can't see them yet. And I'm hoping these things will help you understand the rescuers I want to tell you about. So let's see if you guys can guess who they are. One of the elements in the story is a baby. So, unfortunately, I don't think any of the babies in the Bible we're covered in orange marker, but our baby is today. So let's see. This baby was born in some unique circumstances, okay? My baby doesn't even have clothes on today. Um, another part of the story involves a wicked king. So I have a crown here, and he wanted to do some bad things. This king wanted to do bad things. And this story has to do with a faraway place called Egypt. Okay? So we have a baby who was born in unusual circumstances. We have an evil king and faraway place, Egypt. Okay? Now, the story also has to do with a miraculous escape. This is a, an escape sign. Um, <clears throat> and... An important rescuer. Okay, so I'm, I'm showing you band-aids because that's the kind of first aid kit I have. 
Um, do you have any idea what story I'm telling you about? Hmm, let's see. These things all have to do with an Old Testament figure named Moses. And we've been talking about Moses for a while. Um, when Moses was born, there was a bad king called Pharaoh. And he was worried that God's people, the Israelites, were going to get too strong and overpower him. So he made a rule that all of the baby boys born to Israelites had to be killed. It's horrible. Well, one of those babies, here, this baby right here, wow, this baby represents that baby. One of those babies was born to a mother who didn't want her son to be killed. So she took her new baby, she placed him in a basket, and floated him down the river. We've talked about this, we've, we've learned this story. And it worked, because Moses survived. When he got a little older, God rescued, God called him to rescue the Hebrew people and lead them out of Egypt and out of their slavery. God's hands was on his life all the time. And it's a wonderful story, but it certainly is not the end of God's plans and his rescue missions. Later, Jesus was born, much later. There was also a bad king whose name was Herod when Jesus was born. Herod got worried because he didn't want the people of God threatening his power and kingdom. Does that sound familiar? Just like the Pharaoh had worried about when Moses was a baby. Herod made a law that all the baby boys, two years old and younger, had to be killed. There's a, there's a very big similarity here in these two stories. God knew what he was doing. Mary and Joseph heard about Herod's nasty plan, and they whisked their precious son away in safety. Do you know where they went? They went to Egypt, the same place Moses was when God helped him. It's also partly to help an important prophecy come true. God knew and planned how Jesus would live and grow long before it happened. And after Jesus grew up a little and wicked King Herod was gone, Jesus returned from Egypt. And ultimately, he rescued us from our slavery to sin. So the story of Moses, the very first one we talked about, is only a brief preview of how amazing Christ's work is to our lives. So, even though horrible things happen, like when Moses was a baby and the Pharaoh ordered all baby boys to be killed, or when Jesus was a baby and King Herod ordered all baby boys to be killed, God still knows what's to come and he has a plan for it and a purpose for it. It, it can be really hard to understand that, but we need to trust God's timing and his promises. He will always take care of us, even though this world gives us trouble. One day, he will make all things new. We're going to thank God for providing and ask him to help us remember that. So we're going to say a prayer. Now I'm going to show you a couple um, other things I have for you today. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for your purposes and plans. You are always present and at work. Even when things seem bad or difficult, help us to trust in that and to trust in you. We love you, God. Thank you for Jesus. In his name, amen. Okay, so I have um, a couple of coloring pages because God's timing is perfect. We might not realize that, but his timing is perfect. So I found um, this really cool picture of a clock. It's got a lot of gears and things, a little bit more detail. But at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, there is a place on it to um, trace the words God's timing is perfect. So there's this one, and you can download this from our website, um, cccvv.org. 
Okay, here's my sample of that. Okay, I always have fun coloring the pages. Or if you need a slightly more simple one, I have another fun little clock face. Again, it has God's timing is perfect for you to trace at the bottom. And here's my sample of that. Okay, so God saved both Moses and Jesus from both of the evil king's plans. His timing is perfect. We might not understand it, but we can trust it. Have a wonderful Sunday, um, and I will see you guys next Sunday.